All right, this is from China's Math Olympiad, twenty twenty one. It is a proof problem, and、um, it is difficult, but it is、uh, manageable. All right. So here we're given two number sequences, a and b n. They are related with a mutual kind of symmetrical relation. Here is the average of sum of squares of previous one、um, hundred items of the other sequence, right? So usually a recurrence of the sequence is regarding the same term, right? You're gonna have Fibonacci. You know, a n equal a n minus one plus a n minus two, but here is kind of cross. So we would like to prove that there is some integer m such that the difference between a m and b m is bounded by point zero zero one, a small number. So in other words, the two values will be very close to each other. All right. So why don't you pause the video, try to you know come up with a proof, and maybe work on this recurrence to see if you can find some pattern and start from there. All right. So when you are ready, let's continue with the proof. Okay. First of all, we would like to see this recurrence, as we said. This is actually two sequences, the mutual relationship here, right? How are they connected here? So you notice that if I square them, right? So in other words, a n square. Let's find the pen here. So if the a n square, that would be equal、um, the average of some square, right? So let's one hundred.、Uh, I'm going to put it here, yeah. So that will equal sigma. The b n, you know, b j square, right? And、uh, here is the same thing here, b n square equals sigma some a n square, right? A a j, right? Or a minus j, depending on how you define the j, right? So. Notice that if I mul not multiply, if I subtract one from the other, right? So I'm, what I'm going to have is a n square minus b n square is going to equal sigma of some, you know, with proper index. This is kind of a b j minus a j square, right? With a sigma, you know, j with you know one hundred terms here, right? So now it is clear that、uh, with this, if you treat this as a new sequence, you're gonna have a recurrence、um, relationship、uh, with itself, like a self recurrence. That's what we're looking for, right? So here's a clue. Then, so what we would like to do is we're gonna consider a new sequence instead, x sub n here. I'm gonna have this. So with that. You know that x n satisfies a recurrence, as we notice here, right? And this would be the recurrence. And let's write it out. So it will become 100 x n is equal, you know, the elective of the previous 100 terms, right? So in other words, this. Is the recurrence relationship, okay? So once we have this recurrence and we have,、uh, you know, related to the previous one hundred terms, right? So let's review some, you know,、uh, techniques in、um, solving or examining the linear recurrence relation here, right? So we call that linear recurrence of order d. If you are Relating the previous d terms with some constant here, this c i would be some constant, and then this term is linear. You know, there's no square or something like that, right? So we usually look at what is called the characteristic polynomial. You know, which is、uh, we have a lambda here. You know, that that would be the 
um, it's a polynomial and then once we find that the roots and then we can write an equation for this sequence here right so if there are distinct roots they're going to be you know some constant here how do we decide this constant you're going to uh, look at the initial value like a1 a2 but in this case we're not given right so in the in the in the original problem we don't know what is the initial value here right but that's okay we're not supposed to find the exact like uh, formula for that we just need to find out if am and bm are close enough right so here what if the roots has multiplicity right so for example if if the roots in this polynomial there could be roots that with multiplicity of three for example in that case the term usually you have for each root you're going to have um, the r to the nth power right but here uh, if the multiplicity is, is more than one we're going to have these terms here you know and the n square in in the m equal case case so sometimes we say that the, oh, that's going to be rn with some polynomial here right and let's say uh, this polynomial here the degree is going to be bounded by the multiplicity right if the multiplicity was three then this degree is going to be square right so that's generic term so in other words uh, a n would equal sigma uh, for all the roots right on r i yeah this is would be p i okay so that's a generic term all right so another thing we want uh, to review is that uh, in our case since this is a recurrence for the new sequence we define of course we know that xn is nothing but x square a n square minus b n square right so here this is the what is called the characteristic polynomial so it's 100 degree so this would have 100 roots yeah so 100 roots some of them could be complex number which will usually will come into in pairs right because we have an integer coefficient here right so but of course we probably do not want to solve this e equation here 100 100 degrees right so uh, but one thing we would like to review is that the sequence stability is depends on the modulus of the rules right so if the modulus of the other rules yeah is less than one here is strictly less than one then once you have n's power here yeah and the whole thing will converge to zero right if all rules have magnitude less than one right so here we try to prove you know the xn to be smaller than some numbers right yeah so maybe we, we will try to you know um, look into this direction to see in our case right so what is the modulus of those rules now we claim that those modulus is strictly less than one all right in other words when n is big enough xn converge to zero okay this is a fact that we're not going to prove here in this video but you can look it up right so if we can convince ourselves that xn converge to zero right in other words this is converge to zero how do we prove that uh, this is bounded i claim that uh, this would be easy now when a sequence converges to zero by definition for any you know epsilon here there must be some integer n such that when little n is big enough you know this would smaller than the epsilon of course because converted value equal equals zero right so that's by def that's the kind of definition so in this case we're saying that there's some number so that a n square minus b n square is going to be bounded by some you know, you know epsilon here right but we are looking for a 
m minus bm. So how that is related? So we know that this one is equal a m minus bm, right? Times a m plus bm, right? And that of course is the absolute value. Those are real numbers, so it's actually equal to, equal to this, right? Times a m plus bm. Now we claim that we're given that a and b are positive real numbers, right? Positive numbers. So this one, yeah, would be greater or equal to a m minus b n square, because when you when you plus a number here, the absolute value is going to be greater than the other one, right? So this is greater than equal sign. All right. So we want to prove this is bounded, right? So earlier we know that this is bounded by epsilon. In other words, a n minus b n square is going to be smaller than epsilon, yeah, by definition, right? Because uh, if, if we um, assume x n converges, right, then we can conclude that this would happen, yeah, as as m you know, big enough, yeah? So here, in order to prove this, so in other words, from here, you know that a m minus b and it's gonna be less than square root of epsilon, right? So epsilon, we're gonna be, in order to, this one, zero, zero, one. So we just, you know, for, for all, right? So we're going to pick epsilon equals 0, 0, 0, 1 square, which is a small number here. And then by definition, you know, there exists n such that for all m greater than n, we're going to have, you know, xn smaller than this epsilon. And from there, we know that uh, an, you know, am minus bm. Is going to be smaller than square root of epsilon plus equal to zero zero one. That's a proof. Now we need to show x and converges by proving that all the you know modulus of the roots is going to be less than one. How do we prove that? All right. So we're going to review the what is called triangle inequality for complex number. You know this is straightforward. The equality holds. when the eyes are in same direction. In other words, you know the complex number has modulus and has argument, which is the angle between you know, the positive real line and the complex number itself. So that's something we're going to rely on, yeah, triangle inequality. So we know that uh, there's 100 roots, and we claim that all the roots modulus must be strictly less than 1 we're going to prove by contradiction. Let's say there's one root z. The modulus is actually greater or equal to 1, right? This is proof by contradiction. So we assume that. And z is a root. So you plug in here, yeah? So I'm going to divide it by um, x to 100 here. So 100, right? And z to the 100 plus z to 99 plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to divide z to the 100 here. So this goes away. This will be uh, z to the negative 1. Yeah. And this would be in you know, z 100, negative 100, right? Equals 0. In other words, 100, yeah, equal negative z, negative 1, minus negative 2 minus so on and so forth z to 100 and if you take the modulus here this is a real number yeah because this is a root right z is a root so the modulus here yeah by definition is going to be smaller or equal to the individual ones right so individual ones would be you know z plus z you know plus the modulus of individual elements, right? 
So if z is greater than 1, 1 over z is smaller than 1. If square and 100, everything is smaller than 1. So this is smaller than or equal to 100. Because each individual term by the assumption is less than 1. And there's 100 terms here, you know, 100 terms. Now, I claim that is impossible. Why? Because inequality holds when all z directions are the same. In other words, z and z squared, z 100, has the same angle. In other words, this angle has to be 0. In other words, z is actually a real number. So, so equality holds if and only if z equal to 1. But z equal to 1, if you plug in the function here, you know, 1 is not a root, right? And, uh, and this cannot be the root, right? This is not a root. So, in other words, there's no root that can be, uh, the modulus can be greater than 1. So every root has modulus less than 1. So now we prove it by the earlier argument, right? So in summary, what do we do here in, in the original sequence, right? We try to find a new sequence, which is xn equal a n square minus b n square. And from that, we're going to examine the career strict polynomial and argue that the modulus roots strictly less than 1. So this sequence converges to 0. And then in that case, the you know, difference of uh, an a and b n can be arbitrarily small. All right. So that is a proof. I think it's an interesting problem. I uh, hope you uh, follow the steps and enjoy the video. Please subscribe to the channel for you know similar um, problems in uh, competitive math. Thank you.